In today's video, we're diving into design tokens and aliasing, two powerful concepts that help us create consistent, efficient and scalable design systems. This video is part of a series where you'll create a simple SAS dashboard to understand the fundamentals using Figma. Design tokens are a method for managing design properties and values across a design system. Think of them as a source of truth for design decisions that can be shared between design and code. They ensure consistency across platforms and help scale design systems without losing track of important details. The key benefits of design tokens are consistency, they keep design and development in sync, ensuring that everyone is using the same values. Efficiency, they make it faster to apply changes across a design system, reducing the manual effort of updating individual components. And scalability, as your design system grows, tokens help maintain structure and organization. Let's say your team decides to update a brand color. If you use it tokens, updating one value instantly updates all instances where it's used, saving hours of manual adjustments. Now, if you need to update a set of tokens, but you don't want to change everything at once, what do you do? Aliasing allows you one token to reference another. Instead of setting a fixed X code for every button, you could have a primary button token that references the brand primary color. If you update brand primary, all related tokens update automatically. Imagine a product rebrand where only specific elements should change while others remain the same. With aliasing, you can structure tokens in hierarchy, updating one category without affecting unrelated elements. Now that we've covered some theory, let's move on the practical side, creating design tokens in Figma. Keep in mind that for this series, we are keeping the things very simple. You might already see very complex design systems, but since I assume you'll start learning, I'm trying to keep these videos very straightforward so that you can start working right now. To start, we need a foundational set of colors. In the previous video, we have created a set of color variables, but right now, they're just raw values without meaning. Next, we organize these colors into reusable tokens. In your Figma file, you already have this basic color token frame created with these gray squares, and these gray squares will have the color tokens assigned that you will use in your components later on. Here, you'll define the essential styles like grayscale, primary and semantic tokens for surfaces, borders and text colors that you will apply into your text inside design. Let's start with the grayscale. Open local variables and you might see this primitive collection and you will create a new collection and call it style tokens. Next, create a color variable here and call it grayscale. And look closer to what I'll write here and when I hit enter, watch what will happen here in the side, in this sidebar. So I'll type grayscale slash surface slash default. It created kind of a grouping, so grayscale is a group, then surface is inside of it, and default inside of it also. This happened because we typed each word with a slash in the middle. Variable is created, and now we use what we learned from Elias. Let's reference a color to this variable by click here and going to the library we created in the last video, and look for grayscale and select neutral gray. Then create another color variable and call it lighter. And you might notice that this is already here inside the grayscale group and that's because I've created directly inside the surface active tab. For the lighter, select neutral light gray. Then create a new one for disable and I'll select neutral dark gray. Next to create the tokens for border, you might click in the sidebar on grayscale and then create a new color variable and here in the name type border slash default and that will create a second group. Okay, and then for text icon you do the same as implemented until here. Now that you have all grayscale tokens created, let's assign to these squares here. Select this letter square, 
go to the style button and just write lighter. And you will do the same principle to the other colors. Now you created the grayscale and the primary color. Next, you create the semantic colors for success, warning, error, and information. So go here into your local variables and create a new collection called semantic colors. And to use this to level up your skills on Figma, let's use modes. Modes allow you to create variations of a single token, so instead of separate variables for each state, like primary and success and so on, you can switch between them dynamically within a single token. You will see that magic later on. Modes are only available on any paid plan, but if you are on a free account, that's okay, you can do the same, but instead of modes, you need to create groups of variables for every semantic color, like we have done previously. So back into the variables window, within your semantic colors collection, let's create a new variable and type surface slash default, and you have this plus icon here on the right hand side that will create those modes you should see this table look. So rename the modes, and this one will be success, mode two will be warning, mode three will be error, and mode four will be information. The process is the same as we have done before. Click here in the color, select library, and since we name our colors in the last video, just search for success and select 500 because we know that 500 is the number of the middle uh, in our scale. So for warning, just search also for warning 500 and the same apply for error and information. And you might be already getting the idea, so I'll do the same for all the other styles we need. And there you go, we got all the colors for surface, border and label. Next, we need to assign them to the corresponding square. So here, search for surface, settle and so on and so forth, apply to the other gray squares. Okay, everything is connected to each token and since we are using modes, now pay attention because magic will happen right now. So I'll delete these semantic groups and I'll duplicate this one, holding down option to copy it. If you look at the design panel on the right hand side, here in the layers section, you can click in this icon. That is for modes and you can change your mode. So instead of success, you can change it to warning. And this is magic. So as you can see, everything got updated to the warning state. And if you duplicate it again and do the same, you can change it to wearer. And now let's do the same for information. And so pretty fast you updated a lot of squares into in just one click. And there you go. This is great magic and it, this will save you hours when you are working with bigger design systems. So with your design tokens, you created this wall design system that you can apply into your dashboard design that you are creating here in this series. In the next video, you are going to create a typography system. Until then, you may also watch my video with more information about using modes to create light and dark mode in your UI. Let me know in the comments if you are following along and if you have any questions about design tokens so far. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day!